I am Kathy Brox, and this is KO Script Fire Me Up Bible Study. Yeah, yeah. Amen, y'all. Glory to God. We are definitely live. I should say, I am live. Amen. And you are listening to me, and I appreciate you so much. Um, the Fire Me Up KO Script, um, I should say, K- KO Script Fire Me Up means what is your scripture? And fire me up, of course. Amen. And the word ig- ignites in us. That's what, that's what that's about. It's about the igniting of the word on the inside of us. See, the word is not dead. It's just that we haven't realized that it's on the inside of us. And so the Bible study is about um, igniting your knowledge of the word on the inside of you. That's third John and two. Beloved above all things, I wish that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers and your soul prospers with the forgiveness of your sins, salvation. And that is the beginning of the prosperity or the prospering of your soul and of the blessings. Amen. Through salvation, you see those good things from the Lord. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord God, for this day. I thank you, Father God, for bringing us together to be blessed, to study your word, to get understanding Oh, Father God, my mouth is open. Fill, oh, Lord God, fill my mouth, Father. Fill my mouth with your wisdom, your understanding, your words, your love, your joy, your peace. Amen. With tongues that I don't even understand, Lord God, with moans and groans. Like the Holy Spirit, oh, Father. For you fill the mouth of the Holy Spirit, Lord. Fill mine, oh, Father. In the name of Jesus, that it may be a blessing to all those that hear this message. I thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for you are worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, thou art worthy. Thank you, Lord God. For we worship you. Salvation is unto the Lord, to the Lord our God, who sits on the throne. Hallelujah. For we know the voice of the Lord God Almighty, and another we will not follow. Amen. The Lord God Almighty is to be worshipped and honored and praised. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Sitting at the right hand of the Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. Amen. We do not serve strange gods. That is anything, any religious thing or being that would exalt themselves to the position of Jesus. And call themselves your Lord. God says they are not your God. For the Lord Jesus. The great I am is your God. Your Lord and your Savior. Those things are what's called little gods. False gods. And God uses a small g to denote the falseness of it. I shouldn't even say little gods. It's a false God, not a little God. Man is considered a little God. But those, like, for example, you have different religions out here that proclaim to be Jesus. They hate Jesus and they proclaim to be Jesus all at the same time. A house divided against itself will fall. It will not stand. You cannot hate Jesus and hate the name of Jesus and still call yourself Jesus. Jesus you cannot that house falls and so those strange gods will use the name of Jesus to try and, try and get people to believe their lies and deceits and before if you don't get wisdom and get understanding then you're serving a false god and all that false god is once you peel back the layers is the devil is Satan 
and Satan belongs beneath your feet. He is in hell and he will use any covering, any mask, and any lie to try and get God's people, Jew and Gentile, to try and get any Adam to surrender to him. The Lord has told us to say no time and time and time again. Say no to the devil. So I'm telling you, say no to the devil and yes to Jesus. Jesus loves you and he wants you in perfect peace. And your peace comes through him. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm giving you these Bible studies and we're reading the word today because when we read the word we get it helps us to get understanding it is nourishment for our soul and so our soul is mind will emotions imagination and conscience and remember the mind is like a, a bowl and then the will emotions imagination and conscience is all up in there and so the mind is what holds everything and that's where the battlefield is and so you have to choose not just every day, but every moment of the day, every second of the day, you have to choose to be like Jesus, choose to be just and upright because you have been made righteous with salvation. And then it is your daily choices in life. Like, for example, you go into a store and the line is long. And you're holding stuff and you open up something, you're drinking, you pay for the thing that you were drinking, but then you forgot the thing that you didn't open that was in your hand and you were just holding it and talking and you forgot to give it to the cashier. And they don't notice it, so they don't know to charge you or to ask you for it. And you walk out the door and when you get out on the outside of the door, you look in your hand and you see that you have this thing in your hand. And now your decision is, do I go back and get in that long line? Or do I steal from this man and dishonor God and pa- and risk the chance of having to go to jail? And worse, you just stole from somebody. You just committed a sin. The right choice is to go back in and either give them the item and say, yo, I made a mistake. I didn't mean to bring this out. You forgot to charge me for it. And pay for it. Or say, you know what? I accidentally walked out of this, but the line is so long, I don't even want to pay for it. I mean, I don't want it here. I just want to make sure that I don't, you know, walk away with it. Give it back or pay for it. Those are the choices. Not to leave. So you always have three choices. You can leave with it and be a thief. Or you can take it back and pay for it. And then you have the right to take it out of the store. Or take it back and leave it at the store. No, I'm just listening. So you always have a choice in what you do. And we are called to live upright in God and to make the choices he would make. Jesus would pay for the item. Amen. The Lord has made him rich. He does not beg, borrow, nor steal. He has more than enough. And as Jesus has more than enough, so do we. Receive your blessings and your outpouring from heaven. Because you have a heavenly account, a heavenly bank account in heaven, which you can draw from anytime you want to. So desire to do that. You need a thousand dollars to pay rent. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for paying my rent. I want to make a withdrawal from heaven from my heavenly bank account. I need this amount for rent and I need this amount for the phone. And add it, I would add it all up before I started praying. And just tell them how much you need. If you know how much you need by the month, if it's $5,000 by the month, Father, I need $5,000 every month. I need $5,000 for these bills. In the name of Jesus, I receive it. It is mine. And be expectant. Because you're going to get what you're asking for. And if you need a million dollars to start a business, or you want a million dollars to start a business, Father, I want a million dollars to start a business. This is what I'm going to do with it. And lay every cent if you want to. 
If you just want to share your plan with them, great. This is what I'm going to do with it, Lord. Father, I need, I want this for this, and this is what I'm going to do. And so, it's not alone. It's your money in heaven. It's not alone. And God wants to know, he, he, he's concerned, like he's concerned when you brush your teeth or don't brush your teeth. He's concerned. He wants to know, well, how are you, are you going to be a good steward over that money? Or are you just going to waste it and go buy a bunch of jewelry? See, when we steal things, then we waste it. And we go and we buy things that we don't really need. Three and four watches. We only got two on. But when we are, when we ask for a thing and we, we work for them and believe that thing, then we are good we we work to be good stewards over that thing and we write out a plan as to what we're going to do and we we share with god what we what we're going to do with that money and how we're going to bless and how we plan to increase that money to make a profit make that money double in size and triple and size and continue to increase and increase because that says that just 30 60 and 100 fold what you do is 10% of your earnings, the very first 10%, you give back to the Lord. And that's your automatic increase right there, 36 and 100 fold. So when you would make your withdrawal from heaven, and you're starting a business, so 10%. If you're paying your rent, ask him for enough for the rent and enough so you can sow into the church. Because that's where he... That's where that 10% goes to the church. So they'll be able to go out and help your person next door that don't know that they have a heavenly bank account. Or the person over there that don't even know how to pull from their heavenly bank account. Don't even know about Jesus. Ain't even accepted Jesus. You hear what I'm saying? God is more than enough. Which is why we have Psalms 37 for today to read and i'm gonna read it slow so you can hear every word and so I'm, I'm telling you what psalms it is so you can pull it up and you can read at your own speed if you like but i'm gonna read not too slow but slow enough so that you can hear me and so that your spirit your ears can hear the words and it reaches down into your heart and it it'll come out of your mouth It'll get in your legs and in your arms and in your whole body. And the word will start to manifest throughout your body and in your actions and in the choices. Of course, in your mind, will, emotions, imagination, and consciousness. Mind, will, emotions, imagination, and conscience. The innermost parts of you going, yeah, this is a good decision based on the word of God. Or no, that's not a good decision based on the word of God. Psalms 37 says, fret not thyself because of evil doers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. That means sin. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him. And he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth the righteousness, thy righteousness, as the light, and thy judgment as the noon day. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way. Because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise 
to do evil. For evil doers, well, in verse 9, for evil doers shall cut off. I'm sorry, for evil doers shall be cut off. But those that wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place and it shall not be but the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace the wicked plotteth against the just and gnasheth upon him with his teeth the lord shall laugh at him for he seeth that this day is coming. The wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent his bow to cast down the poor and needy and to slay such as be of upright conversation. Their sword shall enter into their own heart and their bows shall be broken. A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholdeth the righteous. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. And in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. But the wicked shall perish and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume into smoke. Shall they consume away? The wicked borroweth and payeth not again, but the righteous soweth mercy and giveth. For such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth, and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I have been young and now am old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He is ever merciful and lendeth and his seed is blessed depart from evil and do good dwell forevermore for the lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints they preserveth they are preserved forever but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off the righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue taketh of judgment. Wait on the Lord. Mm, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm sorry, we're at verse 31. The law of his I read verse 30 over again. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom and his tongue talketh of judgment. His tongue talketh of judgment. The law, verse 31, the law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. The wicked 
watcheth the righteous and seeketh to slay him. The Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn, condemn him when he is judged. Wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a green bay tree. Yet he passed away. And lo, he was not. Yea, I sought him, but he could not be found. Mark the perfect man, and behold the upright. For the end of that man is peace, but the transgression shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off, but the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble, and the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. Amen. I saw victory all through that. It is important that we trust God because that is where our victory is. Our victory is not just laying down. Our victory is standing up and waving a flag going, come right here. This is where the Lord is. Salvation is of the Lord. Come get your blessings. And it's not a white flag of surrender. When we, when you move into Jesus, now don't get it twisted just because his robe is white. That doesn't mean that it, that means surrender. His, wo his robe is white for the glory of God is a denoting of the glory of God because his glory is so bright. It is blinding. There is no smudge and smudges are sin. His robe is white to show you that there is no sin in him or on him you ever notice when you wear a white top or a white pair of pants you brush up against something that dust and that dirt shows immediately you eating ketchup fries and drop a little ketchup on that white outfit it shows doesn't it mustard hot dogs chicken barbecue i'm making myself hungry it shows up right so if a condiment, condiment, if a condiment, ketchup, mustard, barbecue sauce, if that'll show up on your white garment, how much more do you think sin would show up on the garments of Jesus? If Jesus, if the Father were sinners, if the Holy Spirit were a sinner, Sin will show up in their garments, and the garment of God is the glory of God. It would show up, but it doesn't, because he is without sin, and he wants us to be that way without sin. Jesus loves you, and he has a plan for your life, and he wants you to be blessed. Receive his blessing. Be made whole. God loves you 100%. And he wants you to be blessed. He wants you to be blessed. Get saved. The beginning of your blessing comes with salvation. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That's for your salvation. I know I said it twice. That's for your salvation. Truly, truly, it's for your salvation. It's for your forgiveness of all your sins. We are born to sin, and some of us don't know that we need to get out of it. We need to be birthed out in and birthed into righteousness. And we say that with a confession of faith. Believe in God. Believe in that the price that Jesus paid on the cross really did happen happen and really and believe that jesus forgives all of our sins that the punishment he took was more than enough to forgive 
our sins that we may have a way back to the Father. If you want to and have a way back to the to the Father, Jehovah God, Jesus, have a way back to Jesus. Repeat this prayer after me. Jesus is the face of the Father. To see the Father's face is too much for you to take. His glory is blinding and bright. Which is why we cannot even sin in the presence of Jesus. You can't even sin in your thoughts in the presence of Jesus. Jesus was in the earth, born into the earth. Which is why when we see the Father, we see the Son. God needs a man in the earth in order to move. And Jesus became that man in the earth that allowed the Father to move about. And to bring about salvation unto us. If you want to be forgiven of your sins. Repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus. I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. I confess my sins before you this day. I give up my past life with Satan. And all these sins. And close every door. To all Satan's devices. I confess Jesus as the Lord of my life. Thank you for saving me and for bringing me back to where I once was. From this day forward, with Jesus, with the Father, from this day forward, Lord Jesus, I will be sensitive to how you feel. I won't hurt you. I will obey you, Lord Jesus. I ask you to present me to Jehovah in your name. Lord Jesus, I believe with my heart. I confess with my mouth that you rose from the dead, that I am saved and receive you today wholeheartedly 100%. Make me a light in a dark place. And from this day forward, I will leave this place and share you with everyone I meet and everyone I know. It's commitment, Jesus. I will get this world for you. I pray this prayer to the Father in the name of Jesus. I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus with evidence of speaking in tongues for the edifying of the body of Christ Jesus. Amen. Congratulations. You just got saved. Amen. Read your Bible starting off with the book of John chapter 1. Don't miss. God loves you. Amen. And um, also read the whole Bible starting off from Genesis all the way to Revelations. Get yourself in a Bible-based church, and I thank you, Lord God, for providing those that are newly saved to the Bible-based church as well as those that have been around for a while and may be looking for another church or feel it on their heart that uh, it's time for them to move. Uh, I thank you, Lord God, for putting them in the right place. And um, glory to God. I thank you, Lord God, that you give them a, 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 a fervor for the reading of your word And that they may get understanding, Lord God, that you may open up the word to them daily. That they may not only read it and understand, but read it, understand, and apply it to their daily lives. Help them to choose right, Lord God. Every listener. Amen. God made you to be a sound mind and sound body. That means no thing gets to overtake your mind. No thing gets to overtake your bowl gets them i mean like put their bowl on top of yours and overtake your thoughts often you'll see people that are practicing different things and they will try to take over your mind that's an unjust thing no evil shall befall you no plague shall come nigh your dwelling that is the word of god no evil shall befall you no plague shall come nigh your dwelling You have a right to a sound mind and a sound body. And a sound mind is one mind, not double-minded. A sound mind is one mind that is restored and renewed by the blood of Jesus. That is a person that has confessed Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And even the unsaved have a right to a sound mind. Amen. Glory to God. So you are to have one mind, one heart, one body, one soul, one love, one God. Amen. 
that those are your rights and that's what you're supposed to have glory to god jesus loves you beloved and so do i thank you lord for successful bible study uh thank you lord god for saving all those uh that have said the prayer of faith and thank you lord god for those yet to be saved uh let this be a blessing to you and share this um teaching and this message with as many people as possible amen and tell somebody how you got saved walk them through the prayer of faith is on the lutgradio.com website under salvation or you can just have them listen to this message and they can get saved that way amen glory to god let me know that you got saved in the name of jesus thank you lord amen amen you're listening to lutg radio's wkkp digital broadcasting dallas fort worth texas Smart listeners, do you want to advertise your business to young go-getters like yourself? Would you like to create business leads over and over without the stress of manual advertising? It's easy. Call 858-848-6186. Advertise your business on the airways with the LUTG radio show. 858-848-6186. There's brand new listeners daily, and this ad is sponsored by LUTGradio.com. That number again is 858-848-6186. And by the way, you're listening, aren't you? You're listening to LUTG Radio's WKKP Digital Broadcasting, Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. Smart listeners, do you want to advertise your business to young go-getters like yourself? Would you like to create business leads over and over without the stress of manual advertising? It's easy. Call 858-848-6186. Advertise your business on the airways with the LUTG radio show. 858-848-6186. There's brand new listeners daily, and this ad is sponsored by LUTGradio.com. That number again is 858-848-6186. And by the way, you're listening, aren't you?